I am honored to have this opportunity to share a glimpse in the life of two Civil War veterans, my cousins, Absalon and Ezekiel Demery. We will take a journey together into the lives of these brothers in the battle. This journey will give you a glimpse of their personal, family, and military life. This research was funded in part by the Curtis H. Sykes Memorial Grant and Genealogical Connections, LLC. We will start with my connection to the Demery brothers. I am related to the Demerys on my paternal grandmother's side. My third great-grandfather was Alan Demery. Stephen Demery was Absalon and Ezekiel's father. Alan Demery and Stephen Demery were brothers and they were born in North Carolina. The Demerys were free people of color and can be found on the very first United States federal census that was published in 1790. My third great-grandfather, Alan, and his brother Stephen had two brothers. Their names were David and John Demery. All four brothers served in the War of 1812 with the Tennessee Militia. I am a member of the U.S. Daughters of the War of 1812 Lineage Society through Alan Demery, my third great-grandfather. Now let's revisit Stephen and his family. After returning from serving in the War of 1812, Stephen Demery married Elizabeth Allen, who was also born in North Carolina. Their children, Absalon and Ezekiel Demery, were both born in Tennessee in the early 1830s. By 1840, Stephen and his family are living in the state of Arkansas, where they will remain for almost 20 years. In 1840, the Demrys were living in the town of Saline in Hempstead County, Arkansas. The household of four free people of color included Stephen, his wife Elizabeth, and their sons Absalom and Ezekiel, both under the age of 10. Elizabeth Demery has not been found on any other census after 1840, and therefore it is hypothesized that she died before 1850. In 1850, in the town of Washington, Hempstead County, Arkansas, Stephen and son Ezekiel are living in the household of Gad and Ann Bradley, who are also free people of color. An interesting point to note is that Gad Bradley was a blacksmith, and Stephen's other son, Absalom Demery, was also listed as a blacksmith on the 1850 census in Sevier County, which was one county over from Hempstead County. According to the census report, Absalom was the only free person of color living in Sevier County, Arkansas. Absalom is living in the household of Methodist preacher Henry Rind and his family. For his service in the War of 1812, Stephen Demery received a bounty land claim in 1852 for land in Hempstead County, Arkansas. Five years later, Absalom purchased 80 acres of land in Hempstead County. His blacksmith business was thriving. It appeared as though the Demerys were settled and relatively happy living in Arkansas in the 1850s. This sentiment, however, would soon end abruptly. Free people of color were doing very well in the state and many Arkansas became threatened by their success. As a result, the Arkansas Expulsion Act of 1859 was signed into law by Arkansas Governor Elias Conway on February 12, 1859. This law required free people of color to leave the state of Arkansas by January 1, 1860, or face being sold into slavery for a period of one year. Elias Conway was Arkansas's fifth governor, and his brother James Severe Conway was Arkansas's first governor. Before free people of color could travel out of state, they had to first obtain a certificate of character from the county or parish clerk. 
this certificate was to be ultimately taken to the clerk of the county or parish of destination. In preparation for his forced exit out of the state of Arkansas, Ezekiel went to the Hempstead County Clerk, Simon T. Sanders, to get his certificate of character. Ezekiel's certificate was signed on October 19, 1859, just two months before the Expulsion Act would be enforced. One can infer after reading the certificate that Stephen Demery was deceased at the time of this transaction. The 1860 census informs that the Demerys went to the free territory of Kansas and made Bourbon County their new home. In 1861, the Kansas Territory became the 34th state admitted to the Union. Kansas joined the United States as a free state. The journey out of Arkansas was surely challenging, as Absalom and his wife Rachel Mumford Demery were the parents of three small children and a newborn, and Ezekiel's wife Nancy Pennington Demery, who was about 20 years older than Ezekiel, was very frail and sickly. Many questions surfaced like, what were the travel conditions during the winter months of November and December? Did they travel by foot? How many people survived this journey? How many families traveled together? In February of 1863, Absalom Demery enlisted with United States Colored Infantry and eventually fought in the Civil War on the Union side. There were several issues that led to the American Civil War the division between the northern and southern states after the election of Abraham Lincoln, the power struggle between the federal government and state government, the economy, and primarily the practice of legalized slavery in the United States. On March 9, 1863, Absalom Demery was assigned duty with the 1st Kansas Colored Infantry, Company G. The 1st Kansas Colored Infantry was organized at Fort Scott, Kansas, in Bourbon County. This infantry later became known as the 79th United States Colored Troops. Absalom Demery's rank at enlistment was a private. He was a musician. He played the fife in the Civil War and so was called a fifer. A fife is similar to the flute. The 1st Kansas Colored Infantry was notably the first African American infantry recruited in the northern states for service in the Civil War. An original 1st Kansas Colored Infantry flag is located at the Kansas State History Museum in Topeka, Kansas. The battles fought by the 1st Kansas Colored Infantry are adorned on the flag. When conditions allow, there is a reenactment of the Battle of Poison Springs at the Poison Springs Battleground State Park in Arkansas, a historical marker that recognizes the contributions of the 1st Kansas Colored Infantry is located in Bragg City, Arkansas, about five miles from the Poison Springs Battleground State Park. The inscription on the marker states, the 1st Kansas Colored Infantry a regiment that included many former Arkansas slaves was formed in August 1862, the first black unit recruited during the war. First Kansas troops were the first black men to see combat, losing 10 killed and 12 wounded in a victory at Island Mound, Missouri, October 28, 1862. Victories at Cabin Creek and Honey Springs, Indian Territory, followed in 1863. The first Kansas lost 117 dead and 65 wounded at Poison Springs, Arkansas, April 18, 1864. Many men were slain as they lay wounded after the battle, killed by Confederate troops. This National Park Service map highlights some of the locations of the battles of the first Kansas Colored Infantry. At the Battle of Island Mound, 
the first Kansas Colored Infantry becomes the first known African American regiment to fight in a skirmish on behalf of the Union. Absalom began duty with the first Kansas Colored Infantry five months after the Battle of Island Mound. On August 21st, 1863, five months after Absalom left for war, a man by the name of William Quantrill and a group of Confederate guerrillas known as the Quantrill Raiders invaded the city of Lawrence, Kansas and burned down many of its buildings and massacred approximately 200 of its citizens. Ezekiel and Minerva Demery were living in Lawrence, Kansas during the Quantrill Raid. A monument honoring the victims of the Quantrill Raid is located in the Oak Hill Cemetery and a register of the survivors is located in Kansas University Spencer Library. Both are located in Lawrence, Kansas. Every year following the Quantrill Raid, a Lawrence newspaper would list the names of the survivors who were still living. Ezekiel and Minerva Demery are listed in the Lawrence Journal in 1899, the 36th anniversary of the Quantrill Raid. On October 17, 1863, less than one month after the Quantrill Raid, Ezekiel Demery enlisted in the 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry, Company H. The 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry was organized at Fort Scott, Kansas in Bourbon County. This infantry later became known as the 83rd United States Colored Troops. Like his brother Absalom, Ezekiel was also a musician. Ezekiel played the bugle, an instrument very similar to the trumpet. The 1st and 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry joined forces in several battles. One such battle was the Battle of Poison Springs. Ironically, Absalom's and Ezekiel's regiment fought just miles from the Demery family's previous residence before they were expelled from Arkansas. The Union soldiers suffered a defeat from the Confederate forces at Poison Springs. There were approximately 301 casualties on the Union side and 114 on the Confederate side. The Confederate forces were under the leadership of General John S. Marmaduke. General Marmaduke was the son of Meredith Marmaduke who was the 8th governor of Missouri. The Marmaduke family were the enslavers of one of my genealogy, Buddy's ancestors. Her ancestors, the Craddocks, both husband and wife, served in Governor Marmaduke's mansion as butler and cook, respectively. The Poison Springs Battleground State Park is located in the town of Chittister in Washita County, Arkansas. The battle at Jenkins Ferry under the leadership of General Frederick Steele is considered as the greatest defensive victory of the Civil War. This engagement was the largest of the west on the west side of the Great Mississippi during the war. According to the National Park Service, the estimated number of casualties were 700 Union soldiers and 1,000 Confederate soldiers. This battle was also located near the Demery's previous residence. Ezekiel Demery, Company H, 2nd Kansas Colored Volunteers, is detached from his company and will report at once to these headquarters for duty as bugler by command of Colonel J. M. Williams, Special Orders, January 8, 1865. The names of the regiment and company are listed on the 7th and 8th columns of the 1865 Kansas State Census. Ezekiel and Minerva and family are living with Alvira Ransom. Ezekiel's brother Absalom and wife Rachel and family are also in Lawrence. Absalom's mother-in-law Sarah Robinson 
Mufford lives next door. Rachel's baby brother, 17-year-old James C. Mufford, served with the United States Colored Light Artillery. This census was dated on June 23, 1865. Nine days later, Rachel's baby brother died. James C. Mumford died on July 2, 1865. According to the U.S. National Cemetery Interment Control Forms, James entered at the rank of private and died at the rank of corporal. He is buried at Fort Leavenworth National Cemetery in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Shown here are Absalon and Ezekiel Demery Certificates of Honor from the African American Civil War Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. Absalon's certificate reads as follows. Certificate of Honor, Absalon Demery, 79th Regiment, United States Colored Infantry, organized from the 1st Kansas Colored Volunteer, August 4, 1862. This name may be located on Wall C, Plaque 86, on the Wall of Honor at the African American Civil War Monument. This monument is located at the intersection of 10th and U Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. A grateful nation finally pays tribute to the 209,145 troops who helped save the nation, end slavery, and start America on a struggle for freedom that continues today. Signed, Dr. Frank Smith, Founding Director, Civil War Memorial Freedom Foundation. For more information about this soldier, please visit our website at www. AfroAmCivilWar.org. You will find Ezekiel and Absalon's name on the Wall of Honor at the African American Civil War Monument near Howard University. The statue, titled The Spirit of Freedom, was the work of sculptor Edward Norton Hamilton, Jr. When Absalon returned home from the war, he learned that his wife Rachel had died and family members were caring for the children. Absalom and family friend Harriet Simpson had a very short courtship and married on December 22, 1865. Harriet helped Absalom raise his children. They remained married until death did them part. Three years after the Civil War, we find Absalon and Ezekiel listed in the Lawrence City Directory. Absalon is renting a blacksmith shop located on Massachusetts, and Ezekiel works as a laborer. On the 1870 census, we are introduced to five-month-old Ella, the first child of Absalon and Harriet. Francis and Isabel were the daughters of Absalom and his first wife, Rachel Mumford Demery. Notice how the name Demery is spelled. When involved in genealogical research, be aware that you will constantly find misspellings of names. In these Lawrence, Kansas City directories published in the 1870s, we see that Absalom continues to work as a blacksmith and Ezekiel is a laborer in 1871 and a cabinet maker in 1879. Military pension applications contain pre and post war experiences of the soldier from interviews from the soldiers themselves, their widow or widower, family and friends, and from soldiers who served with them. The interview by adjunct W.C. Gibbons in August 1879 was included as evidence in Absalom's pension file. Gibbs, Gibbons wrote, I remember very distinctly the place where Absalom Demery, Pfeiffer, was hurt. It happened in January of 63. The place was about 18 miles south of Fort Smith, Arkansas, at a creek while on the march. I was at that time adjunct 79 U.S. Colored Infantry. Demery informed me that he 
could not blow as he had hurt himself. I asked him how. He remarked, jumping down the bank back young at the creek. I inquired to the nature of his and was convinced he had produced hernia. I do not remember seeing the affected part. Demi was an exceptionally truthful colored man. I took his word. Absalom was a very successful blacksmith and businessman. His blacksmith business was advertised in different newspapers and the Lawrence, Kansas City Directory. An 1879 advertisement in the newspaper submitted by Demery and his business partner, Moses Sweezer, read, Bring in your horses that need special care and chewing. Plows made to run like a patent lever watch. Come and see for yourselves. On the 1880 census, Ezekiel's occupation is listed as butcher. In the Lawrence, Kansas City directors, we learn that Ezekiel is a butcher at Faxon's Butcher Shop. Absalom's blacksmith shop is located on Massachusetts Street. During a speech at the 29th anniversary of the memorial services held in commemoration of the Quantrill Raid, Governor Charles L. Robinson, the first governor of the state of Kansas, mentioned that at the time of the Quantrill Raid in 1863, his family was living in the home where Demery's Black Shop now stands. Monica Davis, Research Services Coordinator at Watkins Museum of History, points out the location of Absalom Demery's blacksmith shop during the 1870s to 1880s. Information about Absalom was included in the Casual Exclusion Life in Segregated Lawrence 2017 exhibit at the Watkins Museum of History in Lawrence, Kansas. Waxman Candles is located down the street from the Watkins Museum. Absalom Demery's blacksmith shop was located in that same proximity as the candle shop on Massachusetts Street in Lawrence, Kansas. Absalom Demery's biography is included in Alfred T. Andreas's 1883 book entitled History of Kansas. Absalom was a charter member of the Western Star Lodge No. 1 and remained an active member until his death. Charles Henry Langston, who was the grandfather of Langston Hughes, was a member and officer in that lodge. Charles's grandson Langston Hughes was raised in Lawrence, Kansas and became one of the most notable poets in American history. Absalom's will was written just weeks before his death. Absalom Demery died at the age of 55 on September 14, 1890. Some newspapers claimed that his funeral was one of the largest. The Western Star Lodge No. 1 facilitated the funeral services at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. St. Luke AME was organized in 1862 in a blacksmith shop on Massachusetts Street. Absalom's daughter, Ella, was the church organist in the late 1880s. Several Demery descendants attended St. Luke down through the years. Descendants of Ezekiel Demery currently attend today. The edifice shown was built in 1910. Absalom was buried in the Oak Hill Cemetery in Lawrence, Kansas. William Allen White, one of the leaders of the progressive movement, once called Oak Hill Cemetery the Kansas Arlington because of the many influential individuals buried there who impacted the state's formation. Absalom's obituary is a valuable research for family history information. At the time of his death, Absalom had a pending military pension claim to receive an increase of his monthly pension. He had been receiving a monthly pension of $8. His widow, Harriet, applied for the Declaration for Widow's Pension under the Act of June 27, 1890. 
One of the testimonies included in Harry's application was that from Nancy Libby. Nancy Libby's testimony was the only testimony contained in Absalom's pension files that was rated with a reputation of excellent. Absalom rented a blacksmith shop from her husband. In her testimony, Nancy writes, I have known the soldiers soon after his return from the army. I can't say just what year. I know he rented a blacksmith shop from my husband and that at that time he was rather crippled up, complained of rheumatism. I know my husband gave him a treatment for rheumatism. Later on the soldier bought a shop on his own. I knew the soldier very well from the time he rented our shop up to the date of his death and I know that he was always troubled with rheumatism from the time he rented our shop up to the date of his death. But the degree of disabilities I do not know, but I do know that my husband often gave him medicine and told me that it was from rheumatism. I also know that the soldier himself told me on several occasions that the misery that was gnawing him he got from the army. In his March 1898 testimony, attorney William H. Smallwood claimed that I was camped in Company G, 79th USCT. I well remember Absalom Demery as a member of my company. I remember him because he was a musician. I do not remember him having any sickness while in the service. The record will show that I resigned April 19, 1865, so that I was not with the company when Demery was said that he had a sunstroke. I will say he was one of the best men I had in the company. At the time of his interview, Attorney Smallwood's law office was located in the Tory building, which was the first skyscraper in the city of Duluth, Minnesota. It is interesting to note that the Tory building was one of the first buildings in the United States to implement cutting edge fireproofing techniques. The building still stands today. Many veterans of the Union forces joined the Grand Army of the Republic Fraternal Organization. When Ezekiel joined the GAR, the name of his post was the George Detzler Post number 365. In 1893, the post requested and received permission to change their name to the Samuel Walker GAR post number 365. Military pension records contain valuable genealogical information, especially for our Civil War veterans who served in the United States Colored Troops. Military pension records provides pre-emancipation information and helps break down some of the barriers faced by those who are researching African Americans before 1870. Valuable information can be gathered from the files like the names of current and previous spouses and many names and the dates and locations of those marriages. Also the names of children and their dates of birth. Nine of Ezekiel's children who were living at this time are listed with their dates of birth beginning with his firstborn William Franklin Demery born on October 5, 1862. Three of Ezekiel's sons, Emmanuel, James, and Joseph, served in the Spanish-American War with the 23rd Kansas Volunteer Infantry. The 23rd was an African-American infantry and the only Kansas infantry that was sent to Cuba for duty. Joseph Demery followed in the same footsteps as his father Ezekiel and his grandfather Stephen as he too served in the military as a bugler. Other valuable information that can be gleaned from pension records include soldiers date and location of birth, physical description, name of former owner, and the soldiers medical records. We see that Ezekiel Demery was born in Davidson, Tennessee, had dark eyes and hair, yellow complexion, a height of 5 feet 7 inches, and free.
as he was a free person of color. One of the favorite census years for a genealogist is 1900. During this year, you can discover how many years a couple has been married and, more importantly, the total number of children that were born and the number of children that was currently living at the time. By 1900, Minerva had birthed a total of 15 children. 10 were living at the time that the census was taken. Beginning in 1855 and ending in 1925, the Kansas State Census was taken every 10 years. From a genealogical standpoint, this gives a better picture of an ancestor's life and activity between the federal census years. On the 1905 Kansas State Census, we see that several adult children are living in the household with Ezekiel and Minerva. And as displayed by the Lawrence Kansas City Directory, a number of their children were living away from home. Three years later, Minerva transitioned at the age of 68. The newspaper noted that Minerva Demery was one of the pioneer mothers of Lawrence. A little over a year after Minerva died, Ezekiel Demery, at the age of 77, married Mabel Jackson. Mabel, who was 35 years old, was less than half of the age of her husband. A few days after his 78th birthday, Ezekiel died. Ezekiel Demery had been a resident of Lawrence, Kansas continuously from 1863 until his death in 1910. This presentation was a glimpse into the lives of Absalom and Ezekiel Demery, two brothers in the battle. Thank you. We can open up for questions now. Hi, uh, this is Evelyn and neighbors. I don't have any uh, questions. I just want to say it was an excellent, excellent, excellent presentation. So filled with information, contextual information, paint the picture so clearly, just fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us. Ms. Morgan, I think you're on mute. Thank you for your support, um, Ms. Evelyn, and for, you know, um, giving me that motivation there, that push the organization that we're in, African American Genealogical Historical, um, Historical Society of uh, Chicago. Thanks for y'all's push. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, this is Or. <laughs> Uh, what a wonderful presentation. Can you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Who is this? Audrey Hinton. How are you? Okay, fine. How are you, Miss Audrey? Fine. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Kudos. I'm a member of the AUGS chapter here in Washington, D.C. Okay. Well, thank you so much for attending. Yeah, so first of all, I'm going to get in touch with you after after this is over, okay, we do that we speak at our, our chapter. What was the name of the book? Not the name, but who wrote the book called The History of Kansas? My great grandfather, by the way, served and he had four brothers. Two of the brothers moved to Fort Scott after okay. the war. And okay. I, I could almost do a story like you did on their lives. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then that's, that's where Absalom and Ezekiel, technically where they were in Fort Scott when they left or was expelled out of Arkansas. But okay. the, the um, name of the book was um, History of Kansas and it's Andre, um, um, Andreas is his last name, A-N-D-R-E-A-S. Yes. And it was 1883. Um, I think another man that contributed was a man by the name of William T. Coulter. Okay. 
And I got that book out of the Kansas Historical Society in Topeka, Kansas. Okay. It's it's like the it's like the state archives for Kansas. There's just the historical society. It's called the Kansas Historical Society. So I found that book in that particular archives, if you will. Fantastic. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm going to try. Thank to you so much for attending and taking your time out. Oh, you're quite welcome. Quite yes, like ma'am. What I did. Mm -hmm. I want to, um, if there, are, I mean, I, I'll talk if no one's talking, because of course you see, I love to talk. Um, first of all, everyone who, who I sent an invite out to has something to do with, with today, whether you um, were in the presentation, because um, I'm seeing some people out there, they were actually in the presentation and they probably didn't know it. So thank you so much for being in the presentation. There are some descendants of Af direct descendants of um, the soldiers who are present as well, who I did not know at the beginning of, of, my, um, of my research, who I met, you know, as you know, as you, you're up here in the, 1800s and you're trying to come on down and so some of the relatives are here and what's interesting i'm looking at one of them right now who is shown lorraine she um she actually uh retired just recently retired from being a pianist she taught piano for 30 something years well her direct ancestor was the pianist of the church saint luke so it's just so interesting how that works out. Bishop Chester Thompson um, was one, a part of that reenactment at Poison Springs of the first Kansas colored um, infantry. So um, he's on, he was, he played, played the role as a soldier. And also um, he and, and his group also um, did some reenactment in Hempstead County, Arkansas, which was the homestead of Absalom and Ezekiel and Stephen and Elizabeth when they first left Arkansas. Um, Monica Davis, she is the uh, researcher at, um, at Watkins Museum in Lawrence, Kansas, who, um, who had the exhibit at the Watkins Museum that showcased Absalom um, and his, his blacksmith business. Well, not only that, but some of Absalom and Ezekiel's um, grandchildren played um, a significant role during the war, World War I. And she had an exhibit on World War I um, soldiers who were out of Lawrence, Kansas. And so that, it was interesting. Absalom was on exhibit, and so were his several of his nephews with World War One, all during the same time period, um, in in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, there are several. Um, Peggy Lloyd, Peggy Lloyd um, was the was a retired archivist at um, Hempstead County, Arkansas, which is where Absalom and Ezekiel, um, you know, lived before they was expelled but she's the um she was the re she's a retired archivist now but she was the archivist who actually had a newsletter that talked about um free people of color who served during the civil war and i saw that i did a google search on absolutely i was doing my research found that article and i've basically jump started this whole Absalom Ezekiel research based on that newsletter article that Peggy Lloyd published through the um, Southwest Arkansas Regional Archives out of Hempstead County, Arkansas. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, basically, there's uh, two questions in the uh, chat box uh, from a Marilyn Barnes. Um, excellent presentation. How long have you been researching the brothers in the Demery family? And then from Anita Boyd, when is the book coming out? <laughs> Some people are so presumptuous, don't you think, Dawn? <laughs> <laughs> and she had to have a name like mine, huh? Anita, Vernita, whatever. Okay, <laughs> so to answer um, Marilyn's question, um, uh oh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. It was, uh, how long have you been researching oh, the okay. brothers and the Demery okay. family? Okay, so with the brothers and the Demery family, 
I didn't find out about them until um, 2017. I didn't, I didn't know anything. About, I knew about my third great grandfather and his brothers, but I, I only did, I was doing research on my third great grandfather. I didn't extend the research beyond him until 2017 when I, you know, found out, um, when I found actually Peggy's, Peggy's article about Absalom and Ezekiel. And, and I said, oh, okay, that's where Stephen went. Cause I didn't know where his brother went. I was focused on Alan. And, um, and so it, I, I hope that this presentation motivates other researchers like myself to kind of extend beyond our direct line and, you know, go off into the collateral world and research some of your collateral ancestors. As far as the book coming out, um, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I'm, I probably could turn this presentation into a book of some sort. So um, I'll get back with you on Anita, on that one, Anita. Thank you for that question, um, though. <laughs> <laughs> I also have uh, Alvin Blake, um, and he um, wants to know how did they become, how did Absalom and Ezekiel become free people of color? Um, you know what? That's a good question um because like i said they were on the first they they weren't but their ancestors were on the first census ever published was seven which was 1790 now this man by the name of paul heinig has written on several families that were free people of color you know back in the 1600s and 1700s and he's kind of followed them some and what his theory is, is that there was an indentured servant who bought his freedom back in the 1600s. I haven't seen anything on paper, so I can't quant quant qualify that. Um, but I know from 1790 and well, but had to have been before that, but they were, they're listed on the sense, they're, they were free people of color. And um, that's another inter interesting thing when I came across Peggy Lloyd's article about um, free people of color who, you know, served in the Civil War, who, who lived in Hempstead County, Arkansas. I'm from Louisiana, I'm from Natchitoches, Louisiana, Alvin. And so in doing my Alvin, I'm sorry, Alan Demery research, you know, and Alan lived in, in Natchitoches, um, I'm thinking, I don't have any free people of color. I never even looked beyond 1870 or before 1870 because I didn't, why waste my time? I'm, we, we're Louisiana, that's slave country. Um, and so I limited my thought process as a researcher, not thinking that there could have been a possibility that we had free people in our family until I saw that article. And I'm like, oh, um, okay. Well, well, actually it was before that, that article, but, but do, you, do you see what I'm saying? I, I limited myself for years until I realized, and it, it wasn't that article, but it was, I think Paul Hynek's work that I'm like, oh, okay. So let me see if they're on these censuses. And sure enough, that, that opened the door to a lot. But I focused on Allen. I didn't go beyond Allen until 2017. Interesting. And uh, Anita Boyd also wants to know, what's the connection to the Demerys of Illinois to Absalom and, and Ezekiel? OK, so um, there were four brothers that in Tennessee, that they were living in Tennessee. My, my, mine, Allen. Lorraine's um, Stephen was Stephen. John and David were their other brothers who served in the war of 1812. John moved to Illinois. So they're descendants of John Demery. David Demery moved to um, Louisiana after Tennessee. He died, right? I mean, he died before um, 1850, um, but his descendants were in Louisiana. And then of course they sprouted everywhere like everybody else. Yeah, but John was the one that went um, to, to Illinois. And thank you for asking that question. Um, Anita has pulled a lot of death certificates for me for the Demerys in Illinois. And I'm sure that that particular um, 
question came from, well, where, why are all these Demrys in Illinois? It's from John. Those are John's people. <laughs> and I haven't done very much on them, but I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be he he headed that way, hopefully in the next five years. <laughs> uh, this is Audrey again. Um, yes. Renee, have you um, looked under the name Demery spelled with a D-E? M-E-R-Y, because I know there's some in D.C. with D-E. Yes, yes, ma'am. All of the above, we're related. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, and, and, and let me let me tell you this, Audrey, I'm, I'm D-E-M-E-R-Y. That's how my grandmother spelled hers. That's okay. how that's how my people, my the Allen side, we spelled yeah. ours D-E-M-E-R-Y. But okay. but Stephen, they they kept the D I M E R Y, which was the original back back when. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so mine changed. <laughs> and you'll find all types of spellings. Like I said, don't yeah. think it's not the same family yeah. um, because of the spellings. You know, it's spelled, I've seen it spelled Disney, like Disney <laughs> World. And I'm like, why couldn't that have been my family? Disney, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> I'm happy anyway. Email address in the chat. Can we get your email address or how we can contact you? Oh, you yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. There we are. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Make sure I uh. typed it right, yeah. So there's a, a Peggy Lloyd who mentions in the uh, chat, great research, a scenic byway was, has recently been created by the Arkansas Department of Transportation that follows the Camden expedition from the Arkansas Military Museum in Little Rock into Southwest Arkansas to Poison Spring, Camden, Jenkins, Ferry, and other sites. It began March 23rd, 1864 to May 3rd, 1864. Ezekiel may have participated um, I'm, I'm presuming that's Absalom, is believed to have been ill in a hospital in Little Rock. Okay. Yeah. Now that's, that's Peggy, who was the, uh, she's retired archivist that, who had that newsletter. And so she knows the, she knows Absalom and Ezekiel more than I do, probably. <laughs> she's been researching them for a long time. And I didn't find out, you know, until I saw that article, I did a Google search and I'm like, yes. And so, um, Arkansas has a small grant, well, it's a, a, a nice grant called um, the Curtis H. Sykes Memorial Grant. So I applied for it um, and it allowed me to go to Lawrence, Kansas and, and Kansas um, City, Missouri, you know, and to do some research on the Demers. It helped, it helped with that. Mm -hmm. And Chester uh, Thompson has a to make. Uh-huh. You can go ahead, Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Uh, you might be on mute still. Bishop Thompson? We can't hear you, Bishop Thompson. He's on mute. Yeah, Bishop Thompson, I think you're on mute. Yes, okay. his his group was the they were the enact reenactors. Several several men from his church, um, several of the deacons and and members of his church, um, served um, as soldiers during the reenactment. Um, and one of his members uh, actually wrote a book about the first Kansas Colored Infantry, and I think his his, um, I think that they were very instrumental in getting that historical marker um, realized in um, ab about the first Kansas colored in, in Washita, um, Arkansas, that marker that you saw. Um, Bishop Thompson, are you there? Yes, I did travel to Topeka um, to the Historical Society. That's what I was telling um, Ms. Audrey 
that the book about the history of um, Kansas, uh, I found the book at that particular um, archives and right at, or historical society and right adjacent to it is a museum and so that's where the um one of the original flags of the first kansas colored i had a picture of it that flag is in that museum and so yeah i um did research there as well and just a a little trivia while i was there researching you know there are other researchers there the man sitting at my table um he was doing research on his his ancestor and um, Amelia Earhart was his ancestor and he's written several books about her and he was in town to actually give a presentation about her. It was some kind of anniversary going on um, um, during that that time. So and he actually um, I he and I went into the museum together and toured the museum together. Um, Bishop. Bishop Chester, can you, um, are you on mute still or can you? Maybe you can type your statement in the chat if you, there's something wrong with the sound. He said he can't get off mute. Uh, Okay. Okay. Should be a microphone. Your sound might be down on the um, computer. But if you want to type your statement in the chat, she can see that. And the marker has oh, been moved. Oh, the marker's been moved. Okay. Zion Hill yeah. Baptist Church. Okay. So it's is now located in the city of Camden because that's where that's where his church is is in the city of Camden. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. Thank you, um, Bishop Thompson. Bishop Thompson. I didn't know it had been moved. Okay. So we are um, nearing the end of our time. Um, okay. If there are no more questions, I thank you, Ms. Morgan, for um, presenting. It was definitely very informative. Have there been any Demery family reunions in Kansas? No. Because <laughs> Lorraine said no. Well, well, but over across the bridge, there have been two family reunions in Kansas City, Missouri. So right across the bridge. <laughs> yeah, there have been two. Uh, family reunions in Kansas City, Missouri. There's, and and honestly, I'm talking about the Demery Farley Sias Taylor family reunion. There are several branches of Demery reunions all over that I haven't attended. The Demery McMillan reunion, the the Demery I think Nelson reunion. That there are several different ones across, but the Demery Farley Sias Taylor family reunion. Um, that, that I'm very familiar with. We've had reunions in Washington, D.C. when President Obama was in office. That was one of the parts of our, our reunion was the tour of the White House. That was awesome because he was sitting, you know, in the presidency at the time. We've had, of course, in Louisiana, twice in Shreveport, Louisiana. My parents were the um, chairpersons, co-chairpersons of both of those reunions. Um, and Maryland actually had a health um, health fair at those reunions. And then also we've had it in Houston, Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Dallas, Texas, Los Angeles, um, Sacramento, I said Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Boston, Atlanta. And I think I've covered all of the locations. Thank y'all so much for taking your time out. Um, I know time is valuable and precious. Cousin Lorraine, thank you for attending. Uh, She's a direct descendant of um, Absalon. And um, by the way, Lorraine's mom, um, 
my goodness. When a, a Lorraine came to a Watkins Museum, she and her sister Nancy came to the Watkins Museum to, to meet me. You know, um, we met up there. They brought a photo album that their mom had. Their mom is on, on that, that line. And their mother had typed descriptions of each photo in that photo album. I've never seen that before. Their mother now, not them, their mother had the perception, had the wherewithal to do that for her children. Typed up descriptions. And so Absalom's daughter, Isabel, there's a picture of her in that album with her family. Yeah. And that's that's Lorraine's direct descendant. Our ancestor, excuse me. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. And thank you all for um, joining us. Have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>